Hey guys, welcome back to Presume Legal. This is Misha Janice. We've been reviewing the case of Courtney Clunny. She is the social media influencer, I'll say, who is accused and she's currently awaiting trial in Miami, Florida for the killing of her boyfriend, Christian Obamselli. The incident took place in 2022 in their luxury Miami apartment. She she states that they got into an argument and she grabbed a kitchen knife, flung it across the room from over 10 feet away. The knife plunged into Christian's shoulder area. Um, the medical examiner says it's impossible for the knife to have gone where it went from where she claims uh, she threw the knife from. And Christian was dead not too long after that incident. We've heard the 911 call. We've gone through the timeline of the day right up through the incident, all the way through the time when uh, emergency personnel came to the luxury apartment to assist Christian. Courtney was brought to the police station that same day to answer questions. She was interviewed and she was released. Um, it wasn't until about four months later that she was arrested. She was located in Hawaii, I believe. She was in um, a rehab center at the time. Uh, she was brought back to Miami to face her charges. So she has been in county jail for quite some quite a while now. And out of that one incident, we have those charges pending, of course. And there's also a civil claim that was brought by the brought by the estate of Christian Obamselli against Courtney, as well as the building, the residence where they were living. Um, and that's what we're going to be going through today. We're going to read through this complaint. And like I mentioned in one of the other videos on, on this case, we're going to see in this complaint the extent to which this couple was a distraction and cause commotion and chaos in this building for the very, very short time that they were actually residents there. I believe they moved in in January of the year. And by April, um, Christian was deceased. So they lived there for only about three months. Um, towards the end of that time, there was an eviction case that was filed against them to try and kick them out of the apartment just because of the disturbances that were constantly being created by, by these two in their very toxic relationship. So let's go over and, <clears throat> and look at this complaint. Excuse my voice. I am recovering from being a little bit under the weather. So, you know, I may have to stop to take a sip of water once or twice reading through this. It's about a 40 page complaint. Anyways, it should be pretty informative to go through and to see some more of the facts from the point of view of, you know, some of the other, some of the other players and some of the other parties in this case. So let me share my screen. Here we go. All right. Plaintiffs amended motion for leave to file. And this is the third amended complaint. The plaintiffs have filed two complaints previous to this but we are currently on the third amended complaint, which is being answered right now by the parties. So plaintiff Chio Obamselli is personal representative of the estate of Christian Obamselli deceased for and on behalf of all survivors hereby files this amended motion for leave to file motion for leave to amend the complaint. So basically this document was submitted with the actual third amended complaint. This case involved a tragedy where decedent Christian Obamselli was stabbed and died at the One Pariso apartment complex. Plaintiff seeks leave 
from this court to file a third amended complaint to correct the legal names of one of the entities to Aleros Capital Investment, Inc. A copy of the third amended complaint is attached here too as Exhibit A. So let's shoot over to Exhibit A so we can get right to the complaint. Here we go. This is the third amended complaint. As it reads, Plaintiff Chio Obamseli as the personal representative for the estate of Christian Obamseli deceased hereby sues defendants. Aleros Capital Investment Inc., One Paricio, Condominium Association Inc., First Service Residential Florida Inc., Universal Protection Service LL, which probably be LLC, doing business as Allied Universal Security Services LLC, and Courtney Clenny, and alleges as follows. So we should get a quick synopsis of what each of these defendants um, are, what the relation is to, to the plaintiff and to the situation. Jurisdictional and identification of parties. This is an action for damages in excess of $50,000, exclusive of interest costs and attorney's fees. Plaintiff, Chio Obamseli, is the duly appointed, qualified, and acted, acting personal representative of the estate of Christian Obamseli and is the proper party to bring this action for wrongful death pursuant to Florida Statute 768.16 to 26. Christian Obamseli was survived by his parents, Chio Obamseli, and Chris Obamseli, who are the statutory survivors pursuant to Florida wrongful death law. At the time of his death and at all material times, decedent Christian Obamseli resided at the subject premises at 3131 Northeast 7th Ave, Unit 2201, Miami, Florida, 33137 in Miami-Dade County, Florida. The estate of Christian Obamseli is pending in Miami-Dade County, Florida. That's probably the probate case. In all material times, defendant Aleros Capital Investment, Inc., they're going to call them Oleros, Aleros was and is a Panamanian entity who who was and is authorized to business in Miami-Dade County, Florida. Guys, one of my pet peeves is lack of editing, a lack of editing. Um, already we've seen a few typos here. That's That just kind of grates on my nerves. But we will proceed. At all material times, defendant Aleros Capital Investment, Inc. owned, operated, managed, management, maintained, and or controlled the premises, whose principal address is 3131 Northeast 7th Ave, Unit 2201, Miami, Florida, including its common areas. They're going to call that the subject premise. That should probably be capital S, capital P as a defined term. At all material times, defendant, one Paricio. Condominium Association, Inc., Juan Pariso, was and is a Florida for-profit corporation who has a principal address at that same address. At all material times, defendant Juan Pariso operated, managed, maintained, or controlled the condominium complex, including its common areas, with a primary address of that same address, more commonly known as Juan Pariso, subject building. At all material times, defendant, First Service Residential Florida, they're going to call First Service as a Florida for Florida profit corporation whose principal address is 2950 North, 20th Terrace, Hollywood, Florida. At all material times, defendant, First Service operated, managed, maintained, or controlled the condominium complex, including its common areas, with a primary address of 3131. Northeast 7th Ave, more commonly known as One Pariso. At all material times, the front desk personnel at One Pariso were employed and or retained by One Pariso and or First Service. At all material times, Defendant Universal Protection Services, Service, LLC, doing business as Allied Universal Security Services, LLC, Universal, was and is a Florida for-profit corporation with a principal address in Pennsylvania and was authorized to do business and was doing business in Miami-Dade County, Florida. 
At all material times, Defendant Universal was providing security services to the subject building, one Periso. At all material times, Defendant Courtney Clenny was a resident of Miami-Dade County, Florida, and resided at the building with decedent Christian Christian. My goodness, they can't even spell their own client's name correctly. Obamselli. On or about April 3rd, 2022, Christian Obamselli, deceased, was lawfully in one Perry, so the subject building located at the address. On or about April 3rd, Christian Obamselli, deceased, was fatally stabbed while within the subject premises within one Perry, so. Then he was proper in this court because the incident giving rise to the claims within this complaint occurred within Miami-Dade County, Florida. Factual Allegations The One Periso apartment complex was owned and operated by Defendant One Periso. The premises was managed by the property management company, Defendant First Service. The subject unit was owned and operated by Defendant Aleros. Defendant Universal provided security services to the subject premises. Defendant Courtney Clenny was the tenant listed on the lease for Unit 2201. Decedent Christian Obamselli was, at the time, Mr. Clenny's boyfriend and was residing at the unit with her. Okay, so here we have a, a quick and dirty rundown of each of the defendants. So we have one Pariso, which is the apartment complex. We have First Service, which is the property management company at one Pariso. The unit, unit 2201, was owned by Aleros. Universal provided security services for one Pariso. There's a security guards. Then we have Courtney and Christian. Christian Ovamselli and Courtney Clenny moved into the One Periso apartment building on January 6, 2022. On January 6, 2022, or on the first day they arrived at the subject apartment around 10.09 a.m., the front desk at One Periso was notified of a domestic dispute between Ms. Ms. Clenny and Mr. Ovamselli. That's, that's the first day that they were moving in, basically. The Miami-Dade Police Department were notified and arrived at 1.07 a.m. Is that a typo? That must be a typo. That, that has to be a typo. They're moving in that morning, and at 10.09 in the morning, there was a domestic dispute reported. The Miami-Dade Police was notified, and they arrived. This must be 1.07 p.m. in the afternoon. Later that day, police again responded to the subject department at around 1.45, so this is just after police left. They came back due to reports from neighbors of Miss Clenny screaming at the top of her lungs. One Pariso front desk personnel, as well as the security personnel, were notified of both events. So, four days later on January 10th, 2022, at 3.25 a.m., police again responded to one Pariso in regard to a call from the one Pariso front desk about a domestic dispute between Miss Clenny and Mr. Ovamselli. The police left the premises at 4.16 a.m. Later that morning at 5.44 a.m., again, the front desk received reports of fight in Miss Clenny's unit and called the police again. The police left at 6.15 a.m. So the police came twice overnight two separate incidents. That's kind of like the first day, move-in day, where the police also came twice, right? Moving on. On February 3rd, 2022, the front desk at Winbury so again received a call from a neighbor regarding a noise complaint from Ms. Clenny's unit. They sent security to the unit who were unable to make contact with Ms. Clenny. So she wasn't answering the door that day. On February 4th, 2022, the general manager of One Periso contacted a few of the neighboring units at One Periso regarding Ms. Clinney's unit, apologizing for the inconvenience and stating that these tenants have been a problem since day one. 
he advised these neighbors that he would warn Miss Clenny about possible eviction. So we're talking about possible eviction um, less than a month after they move in, right? This is February 4th. They moved in January 6th. On February 21st, 2022, the front desk personnel and the security company were again notified about a disturbance between Ms. Clenny and Mr. Obamselli, where Ms. Clenny was violently attacking Mr. Obamselli in the elevator. This incident was captured on video, still images below. And we've seen these still images multiple times. Let me see if I can zoom in just a bit more. It's a little clearer, right? Yeah, so we've seen these before. This was the elevator incident. On February 21st, police were called to the premises and responded to Miss Glenny's unit, but were unable to make contact with her. Again, she ain't opening the door that day. On or about February 21st, same day, one Pariso, First Service, Aleros, and or Universal knew or should have known that Miss Clenny was extremely volatile, physically aggressive, and was taking out her aggression on Mr. Ovenselli in the residential unit and in the common areas of the building and premises. The following day on February 22nd, one Pariso for service at Laro Center Universal received a noise complaint about Miss Clinney's unit. They sent security to her unit, who asked her to keep the noise down. On February 26, 2022, Miss Clinney called the front desk asking for assistance of security. Security responded to her unit, but were unable to make contact with Miss Clinney. So she called, asking for them to help. Then when they came to help, she wouldn't answer the door. Again, that same day on February 26, one Pariso First Service Alero Center Universal received noise complaints about Miss Clenny's units from residents two floors above and two floors below her unit and called the police. Miami Dade police responded to one Pariso and attempted to make contact at the subject unit as well. I, I, they're not specif specifically saying that they were unable to make contact with her, but if they did make contact with her, we don't know what happened as a result of the contact on that day on February 26th, because it's not specified in the complaint. Moving on, on February 28th, 2022, the general manager at One Pariso contacted Ms. Clenny by email and asked her to come to his office to discuss domestic disputes occurring on the premises. On March 1st, 2022, front desk personnel at One Prairie so witnessed Ms. Clenny involved in a dispute with Mr. Obamselli. Ms. Clenny spoke with the building security who attempted to calm her down. The One Prairie so employees called the police who arrived at the premises and also spoke with Ms. Clenny. On or about March 1st, 2022, at One Prairie so First Service, Aleros, and or Universal knew or should have known that Ms. Clenny was extremely volatile and aggressive and taking her physical aggression on Mr. Obamselli, taking her physical aggression out on Mr. Obamselli in the residential unit and common areas of the building and premises. On March 2nd, 2022, neighbors again contacted the general manager at One Prairie, so asking for an update as they were still having problems with Ms. Clenny's unit. The general manager responded that he personally met with the tenants and advised them that he would take legal action if they did not discontinue their actions. And on March 7, 2023, at 4.52 p.m., the front desk was again called regarding a domestic dispute occurring in Ms. Clenny's unit. Security responded to her unit, and the police were also notified. The police arrived and, shocker, Ms. Clenny did not answer when they responded to her unit. Again. Oh, oh, Courtney. 
On March 8th, 2023, the general manager at One Prairie Soap emailed the landlord of Ms. Clenny's unit, so that would be Aleros, requesting him to take legal action due to ongoing domestic violence occurring in the unit. The general manager requested that the owner evict the tenants as they were deemed a nuisance to our community. The owner of the unit responded that it would send this information to its attorneys to commence the eviction action. So March 8th, the day after the police were called again, the owner of unit 2201 said that it would proceed with an eviction action. On March 17th, 2022, there was yet another noise complaint about a disturbance in Ms. Clenny's unit. Building security responded, but were unable to make contact with Ms. Clenny. On March 21st, 2022, the general manager of One Pariso emailed the owner of the unit 2201 requesting an update on the eviction process as neighbors were still complaining about disturbances occurring in that unit. On March 23, 2022, the building's front desk received a complaint about a possible fight occurring in the subject unit. Security arrived at the unit, announced themselves, and the fighting ceased. Later that same day, another report came to the front desk about disturbances occurring in that unit, and the police were called. The police arrived and attempted to make contact with Ms. Clenny, but were unable to do so. Definitely a pattern going on here. On March 24th, 2022, the general manager from One Pariso emailed Ms. Clenny advising that he was aware that a notice of eviction had been served on her, asking her to advise when they would be moving out. On March 28th, 2022, the owner of the unit emailed the general manager of One Pariso advising that Ms. Clenny had until that following Wednesday, which was two days away, to move out, otherwise he would be calling the sheriff. The owner also advised that Ms. Clenny had not paid her rent for the month of March. Later on March 28th, Ms. Clenny emailed the general manager of One Pariso, advising him that she had been recently diagnosed with a severe borderline personality disorder and had begun taking medication to address her disorder. She also advised that the medication should take effect after a month or so. On or about March 28, 2022, when Pariso, First Service, Aleros, and Universal knew or should have known that Ms. Clenny was not only extremely volatile and aggressive and taking her physical aggression out on Mr. Obamselli in the residential unit and public areas of the subject building and premises, but was also suffering from a severe borderline personality disorder requiring medical intervention, which was most likely responsible for all the disturbances to date. After receiving Ms. Clenny's medical notification, the following day, on March 29, 2022, the general manager emailed Ms. Clenny advising that if she got caught up with the rent, she could remain at the subject premises. This ignored all of the prior domestic disturbances for which eviction was sought, and Ms. Clenny's severe personality disorder to which the prior disturbances could be attributed. On March 29, 2022, the owner of the unit also emailed Ms. Clenny. The owner advised that the main reason for her eviction was because of complaints of disturbances. However, because of her notification of her personality disorder, he was willing to permit her to stay as long as she paid rent, late fees, and the attorney's fees and costs for the eviction, notwithstanding the fact that he knew or should have known of her mental health disorder and the history and risk created by Clenny's actions. The unit owner called off the eviction, directing her to, quote, please disregard the notice posted on your door earlier regarding leaving the premises, close quote. A few days later, on April 1st, 2022, the front desk personnel witnessed another dispute between Ms. Clenny and Mr. Obamselli in the common areas of the subject building and called the police. The police arrived and spoke with Ms. Clenny. This interaction is captured on body-worn camera. 
As evidenced on the body-worn camera, Ms. Clenny was acting erratic, volatile, and aggressive towards the police and the one Periso personnel. On October 3rd, 2022, at 4.33 p.m., Mr. Obamselli arrived at the subject apartment and was seen exiting the elevator to the subject unit. At 4.43 p.m., Ms. Clenny called her mother. Subsequently, a fight ensues between Mr. Obamselli and Ms. Clenny. At 4.45 p.m., the front desk, employed by either one Pariso or First Service, received complaints about noise to the unit. Front desk personnel, Marvin Durant, called the police and advised there was a fight going on in Unit 2201. Mr. Durant was asked if emergency medical services, EMS, were required, to which he responded, no, they just required the services of the police. At 4.45 p.m., building security arrived at the Clenny unit, knocked on the door, heard yelling through the door, stood outside, and did nothing despite knowledge of Ms. Clenny's history of past disturbances in the unit and common areas, her history of erratic volatile and aggressive behavior in her unit and the common areas, and her recently diagnosed mental health disorder that was not yet controlled by medication. At 4.45 p.m., one Pariso First Service, Aleros and Universal knew or should have known that this constituted an emergency and that they had the right to immediately access the unit given the unique circumstances of Ms. Clenny and her history and medical condition. Despite one period so first service Aleros and Universal's knowledge, they allowed Ms. Clenny to commit murder without providing any intervention. They stood outside the door of the unit while Ms. Clenny committed her heinous crime and did nothing to stop or attempt to stop the murder from occurring. At 4.57 p.m., 12 minutes after the front desk was notified and told the police that EMS was not required, Ms. Clenny notified the police that she had stabbed Mr. Olumselli and he was dying. Had one Pariso, First Service, Aleros, and Universal intervened in the 12 minutes when they stood outside of Unit 2201 as they were required to, based on Ms. Clenny's history and notification of her ongoing untreated medical condition, Mr. Olumselli would have, within reasonable medical probability, survived. By the time Ms. Clenny finished committing her crime at 4.58, she opened the door to her unit and saw and security saw her and her dogs covered in blood and Mr. Obamselli was already unconscious on the floor. The police arrived at 5.04 p.m. Had the building personnel or security performed their duties when they were first notified about the fight two minutes after it started, Christian Obamselli, lying, would still be alive. That's a typo, right? That's a typo. But we know what they mean. Instead, defendants, Soleros Capital Investment, One Periso Condominium Association, First Service, Res First Service Residential Florida, Universal Protection Service, DBA Allied Universal Security Services, breached their duties by rejecting EMS service and failing to take emergency action in the 12 minute period where Ms. Clenny committed her murder. While they were aware of this dispute and aware of Ms. Clenny's ongoing untreated severe personality disorder, and were in fact standing outside the door of the subject apartment, Mr. Obamselli tragically passed away from the fatal stab wound. So those are the factual allegations. We're gonna get into the counts and there's going to be quite a few of them, different counts against the different defendants. So I'm just going to sort of skim through these. I'm not going to um, repeat everything as necessary, but I'll just pick out the, um, the different points of the claims. So count one is against, is for negligent security uh, against Aleros Capital Investment. So they're saying that Aleros owed a duty to the residents and invitees of the subject premises to exercise reasonable and ordinary care to keep and maintain subject premises in a reasonably safe condition. 
that they owed that duty of care to Christian Obamselli and that uh, the duty was reasonably foreseeable, was against reasonably foreseeable criminal acts. Um, Aleros had a special relationship with Mr. Obamselli by virtue of its control over the unit and the landlord-tenant relationship. Aleros also owed Mr. Obamselli a non-delegable duty to protect him from known dangers, including Courtney Clenny. So they're saying that Alaris was in a superior position to appreciate the hazards and to take necessary steps to prevent such harm. And through its acts and omissions, um, such as failing to provide adequate security, failing to warn, protect, guard, and secure the safety of the premises, failing to police, patrol, guard, deter, and otherwise provide adequate protection. Um, over the premises, failure to hire, failure to hire, and or retain adequate security personnel, failure to have sufficient guards um, in visible areas to deter crime, failing to have adequate guards to protect the premises, failing to hire competent guards to protect the premises, failing to properly train the security guards to be reasonable, reasonably skillful, competent, and or qualified to exercise appropriate and proper security measures so that they could protect the subject premises. Failure to implement adequate security policies and security measures and procedures. Failure to take additional security measures after being put on notice that uh, certain security measures in force were not adequate. Failure to provide an overall security plan that would meet known industry standards and customs for safety in the premises. Failure to institute eviction proceedings against Courtney Clenny on or immediately after March 1st, 2022. We see that they, um, they basically renounced their eviction action. And they said that, you know, as long as you paid up what to do, and you paid for the cost of the eviction, then it's okay. You can stay. Despite knowing that, you know, there were ongoing issues other than late payment. They were also wrong in calling off the eviction proceedings. Um, they failed to take action to access the unit in the face of an emergency. They failed to remain, remove the dangerous condition, which was Courtney Clenny, from the property. They failed to provide emergency medical intervention. And that all of these failures represent a deviation from um, existing standards of care in the security industry as recognized by other similar businesses and properties in the local community. And they threw in the catch-all, additional acts of negligence not yet discovered. Because, of course, there could be other, um, other things that come out, other facts and circumstances that come out um, that show additional negligence, alleged negligence. So that is the negligence cause of action against Aleros. Moving on, negligent security against One Pariso Condominium Association. I have a feeling it's probably going to be uh, very similar. One Pariso knew or should have known that Courtney was extremely physically aggressive, volatile, and was abusing uh, Christian in the residential unit, and it chose the payment of rent over the provision of adequate security. So assuming that we will see those, um, that evidence come to light in discovery, whether it's, you know, emails or physical um, printouts of letters that were sent, communications between the parties to substantiate these allegations.
These are these are all the same uh, failures, acts, or omissions um, alleged against one Periso, as was alleged against Alero. So I'm not going to go over that again. And it's going to be the same thing with first service residential. It's going to be the same, um, the same failures, the same deviation from, you know, the standard of care that we saw alleged against Aleros. Similarly, it's going to be the same, possibly additional against allied Universal Security Services, these are the actual guards um, that were in the building. Let's see if there's anything new against them. Don't think so. Yeah, it's 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 pretty much the same. Um the same facts that they're using to support the causes of action of negligence. This is a battery claim against Courtney. <clears throat> and this is for civil battery. It says on April 3rd, 2022, defendant Courtney Clenny intentionally touched, struck, made contact with and or stabbed Christian Obamselli against his will. As a result, Christian died. As a direct and proximate result of defendant's intentional actions, the defendant is liable to the plaintiff for all damages to the estate and survivors and beneficiaries entitled under the Florida wrongful death statute pursuant to Florida statute section 768.21. Specifically, the decedent's estate beneficiaries and his survivors have suffered and will continue to suffer damages into the future, including as authorized and allowed under the Wrongful Death Act, Section 768.16, Florida statutes, the past and future mental pain and suffering of decedent Christian Ovumselli's survivors, the past and future loss of decedent Christian support and services to his survivors, expenses and medical care and funeral arrangements arising from the injury and death of Christian, loss of decedent prospective net accumulations, loss of inheritable estate, and any and all other damages specified in Florida Statute Section 768.21. We have a negligence claim against Aleros Capital Investment. Shots fired here. Defendant Aleros breached his duty when it allowed a dangerous condition, Courtney Clenny, to reside at the property, putting other residents and guests, including Christian Obamselli, in danger. Defendant breached its duty by failing to take emergency action when faced with an imminent threat, and it was put on notice that Courtney Clenny was murdering Christian Obamselli at the, sub at the subject premises. It failed uh, it breached its duty when it failed to remove the dangerous condition, Courtney, from the premises after being notified of her behavior and her severe personality disorder. It breached its duty when it retracted its ev eviction notice, despite despite knowing her. It breached its duty, failing to warn residents and guests of the dangerous condition. Courtney, that being Courtney. Another negligence claim against uh, one Pariso of the same order. Breach of duty um, uh, regarding the dangerous condition, regarding Courtney, basically putting other residents and guests at risk in danger.
You receive the same. The same thing. And that's it. And then a request for a jury trial. So that's quite interesting. Let me share with you really quickly. Welcome in, rather, Kim Wald. She is the attorney representing the Abomselli family. Uh, she's joining us tonight from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. <sighs> Kim, good evening to you. Nice to see you. Thank you for being with us. Oh, uh, when I read through uh, the amendments that you made uh, to the, the complaint with these additions, it, it's pretty chilling. Uh, how did you come to discover this information about security being so close to that fatal fight? Well, that evidence is actually from the security's own documents. It's from the management company and the apartment complex's own documents. This is from the police report documents that that they've really documented every single occurrence, every single red flag that occurred here. And it is quite chilling when you go through all of the evidence that in this three month period leading up to this murder, there was notice after notice after notice. And the fact that nothing was done is absolutely outrageous. And that's why we filed this lawsuit because they have to do better. When you have these type of notice, you, you can't simply ignore them. Kim, what would be your response to anyone saying, well, they weren't the police they wouldn't necessarily have the right to enter that building. Um, what do you say to that, please? They absolutely had the right. When you look at the lease itself, they had the right to enter into the into that unit. You know, if this was a water leak or if this was a fire, they would have broken down that door and entered into that unit with absolutely no problem. They had a duty to the residents of that building, they, they owed a duty to Christian. And the fact that they did nothing, that they started this eviction process and then withdrew the eviction process, and then on the night of this murder had notice and stood outside of the door for 12 minutes and, and did nothing, they absolutely had a duty to enter into that unit to stop this murder from occurring. And th they could have evicted them long before this night even occurred in the first place. Kim, reading through uh, the different averments uh, in the suit uh, that you filed, uh, something that really jumped out at, at me and many of my colleagues here at Court TV uh, was that it is uh, apparently it was made known by Courtney Clooney to building personnel that she was suffering from untreated, severe, borderline personality disorder. Uh, what more can you share with us about that? Absolutely. So during this process of eviction, there was notice after notice, and Ms. Clenny had been notified from building management, from the general manager of One Pariso, that she needed to leave, that this eviction process was taking place, and that the police were going to come and escort her out of the building in the coming weeks. And her response to that was to notify them that she had recently been diagnosed with this severe personality disorder and was taking medication that would not take into effect for at least another month. In response, the building management, instead of doing the right thing, instead of continuing the eviction process, said, you know what, let's forget about it. You go ahead, continue this, vi this violent behavior, continue treating Christian this way, and you know we'll forget about it as long as you pay your rent. She also had been an entire month behind in rent. So the apartment complex was more worried about money and getting their rent than actually providing safety that they were required to. So just a few days after they were on notice that they had a woman who had a history of volatile behavior, now known and coupled with the fact that she had this mental health condition that was not treated, they still allowed her to reside, they still allowed this behavior to continue, and they did nothing to protect Christian. Mm. So what we have at the end of the day, looking at this lawsuit, are two claims each against the corporate entities. One claim for general negligence and one claim for negligent security. 
I see the negligent security claim almost like a breach of contract claim. The basis being that since a security company and the related entities whom they're imputing um, the actions of the security company to, since they're contractually obligated to protect residents from criminal attacks, right? That is their job to provide security. Their neglect in doing so breaches their agreement. Of course, the plaintiff has no parity with the corporate entities. He wasn't a party to their contract. So he wouldn't have had standing to bring a breach of contract claim, but a negligent security claim. And here we are. So we just heard from the plaintiff's counsel, um, you know, the basis of the lawsuit that she brought and Now, after the case was filed and all the parties were served, each of the defendants, other than Courtney, of course, filed motions to dismiss the complaint. Each was denied. Each of those motions to dismiss were denied and their answers were subsequently filed. Courtney is mentioned. She didn't bother trying to dismiss the complaint. In her answer, she made the usual denials and you know facts supportive to her position including that christian quote was no longer welcome in her apartment home and refused to provide courtney with the key fob in his possession which allows direct access to her apartment from the elevator courtney was desperate to keep him out of her home close quote additionally she stated courtney was desperate to get a restraining order against obam sally as evidenced by the body-worn camera. Further, Ms. Clenny informs the police about his prior physical abuse towards her and her concerns about his stalking behavior. Security also informs the police that they, security, had to intervene when Obam Sully charged at Ms. Clenny, which is why they call police. She also stated, Mr. Obam Sully tragically died from a single penetrating knife wound However, he was not stabbed by Miss Clinney. The knife was thrown towards him in, in self-defense after he attacked Miss Clinney, who was in fear for her life. The actions she took that evening were justified and necessary for her to survive his attacks. And finally, Mr. Obamselli was the aggressor, mutual combatant, and or committing or about to commit a forcible felony as defined under Florida law against Miss Clinney, who had the absolute right to defend her life by throwing a kitchen knife at Obam Sully, who was the aggressor on April 3rd, 2022. She met force with force and is immune from liability. Answers of Courtney really give us a prediction of some of the direction of her affirmative defenses um, that she raises against the allegations of battery. The affirmative defenses that she raised in her answer range from comparative negligence meaning the plaintiff suffered damages as a full or partial result of his own illegal actions to all sorts of immunity from liability based on different theories of the law, including that plaintiff was a trespasser, uh, that he used deadly force to prevent, or that she used deadly force to prevent a felony being committed upon herself, that she had no duty to retreat and she had a right to stand her ground. Those are trigger words, huh? and that plaintiff and Courtney were mutual combatants. So these defenses give us a good idea of where Courtney's defenses uh, will be in her criminal case. Um, The attorneys defending her in that criminal case are the same defending her in the civil case. So we're likely to see the same arguments used in both matters. So what are your thoughts? Do you think any of the corporate entities were negligent in how they handled the situation with the uh, with the feuding couple, should they be held liable for Christian's demise? To what extent were they wrong in not taking action against the couple sooner? I mean, they were only there for what almost three months: January, February, March. So it's not like they were long-term residents of the building. What do you think about the fact that uh, an eviction process was started, but then it was abandoned? They called it off because of the mental health um, diagnosis that Courtney claimed she 
she received. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Leave your comments below. Oh, if you are curious about what the apartment looks like, check out the video that I posted already. I'll share a link with it here, but make sure you check out the, uh, the apartment tour video that I posted. Um, it's, it, it's a beautiful building, but when you see what happened in the apartment, um, I think you'll be surprised. So that's all I have for today on this. If you enjoyed this, uh, this overview of the lawsuit, don't forget to like this video, please. Thank you in advance for liking, for sharing your comments on, um, on my content. I really appreciate the engagement. I love reading through your comments as well. All right. Until the next drop. Peace.